All right, let's settle in. This is gonna be a long one. Hi, my name's Olivia, and I'm here to tell you about the time that I had cancer, which, to be honest, is not something I ever imagined I'd ever say out loud. But here we go. I feel like it's a good way to like let everyone know at once instead of like randomly posting like, oh, and by the way, I'm a cancer survivor, because then people are like, wait, what? Like, why didn't I know that? And I'm like, well, you just, you never asked. And like, I don't really go around like announcing that. That's weird. So I get so many questions about the scar on my neck. And even if people don't ask, I can always tell when someone goes, it's pretty obvious. They're wondering what happened or they want to ask and they're not sure if they should. And I don't mind answering questions. That's not my issue. Um, it's the context of when the questions are asked or who's asking or the kind of undertone of what's wrong with you that I get so often that I'm kind of like, uh, you know, I just, I had a thyroid issue and then people usually drop it, but some people will press and be like, oh, well, what happened? And I'm like, oh, you might want to buckle up. And I don't know if like, do people care? Are they just curious? Do they actually want to know? Like, I never can really tell. Which, I mean, I would be curious too, I get it. I'm not mad about it, it's just a really repetitive story for me to tell, and like I said, the timing's not always the best to tell it. So like if I'm at a coffee shop or getting a smoothie and people say, oh, and by the way, what's wrong with your neck? And I'm like, oh God, like, can I just get my smoothie and go? Like, I don't wanna talk about it every single day of my life. So I figured this video could clear up some questions, and even if you're someone in my life, who hasn't asked, by the way, thank you. I, I'm sick of my own voice. Um, you, could, you could get it here, which is great. It's not that exciting of a story to me because I've told it nearly every single day for the past three years when someone asks me, I'll tell them as much as they wanna know. But that being said, when I tell someone point blank, like I had cancer, their initial reaction is, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to ask you that, or I didn't know, or I didn't, I didn't know how bad it was or something. They think it's like, I guess I don't know what people are thinking it could be. Another thing is like when I tell people that I've had cancer, their second reaction after they say, I'm so sorry for asking, or, you know, I had no idea, I apologize. Uh, another common reaction is, let me tell you about my friend, relative, sibling, who also had cancer and didn't make it or had a much worse course of treatment or suffered a lot worse than I did. And I'm kind of sitting there like, obviously I feel really bad, <laughs> but, I'm, you know, I'm getting a smoothie or getting coffee and this is not the time or place that I wanted to have this conversation. Usually when I tell people, it's people who I'm having a conversation with, or I'm at a party or, you know, literally anything else but a stranger approaching me or if I'm at work, someone says, hey, yeah, I'll take a coffee and by the way, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, oh God. So, like I said, let's get into it. So I went to school at Michigan State University and at the beginning of my junior year, I remember I had like a really minor illness, like a cold or the flu or something, and I had a huge swollen area on my neck. I, I guess it's like half the size of a lemon. Um, I'll insert some pictures. Everyone noticed. I mean, all my friends were like, dude, your neck is huge. And I was like, yeah, um, I, I was just sick like a little while ago, and I guess my lymph nodes are like really responding to it. And you know, it didn't hurt, which was unusual because usually when you have really swollen lymph nodes and you have a cold, they get so painful and so tender. It didn't hurt at all, which I was like, okay, it must not be that serious. Um, but it didn't go away either at all. It just was kind of huge. <laughs> and I named her, we, my friends and I named her Helga because no offense to the Helgas out there, but it's kind of a heinous name. And we just didn't know what to think of it. And I didn't think, I mean, no one ever thinks like, oh yeah, that's it, I have cancer. I mean, you go on WebMD and like freak yourself out, but not like seriously. Um, so I never really thought too crazy about it, but I was, I was like, I was sick and I had a lymph node and it makes sense, like moving on. And then I don't know what it was one day, but I was like, this really isn't going away. I should probably get this checked out. So I went to the local urgent care because I didn't have a doctor in Michigan and they did some scans and people kind of looked at me funny and like, you know when the doctors know something's wrong but they're not quite telling you and you're like, I want to know. Well, they were kind of doing one of those and I was like, this isn't good. Like I kind of started, that's when I started to kind of freak out where I was like, wait, why aren't you giving me like a simple, yes, that's of course, that's a lymph node. Don't worry about it. They didn't give me any of that. So like, 
then they were they were saying that I should go to the emergency room because the urgent care didn't have the proper machines to do the scans or couldn't run the proper test to really rule out that it wasn't cancer. And they kept saying like, we don't want to say that and scare you, but we need to rule it out. And I was like, all right, cool. I guess I'll go through with it. So I was freaking, but I went I went through it. 12 hours later, a bunch of scans. I can't remember exactly what they did because I was super emotional and I, they throw out these letters MRI, CT, PET, I don't know what they did or what they didn't do, but they did a lot of tests for 12 hours. And eventually this doctor comes in and was like, you know what? That's just a cyst. That's just, that's a birth defect in your neck that resulted in a cyst. So what he explained to me, and this is a real thing that people have, is that I had a branchial cleft cyst, which is your neck has rings of tissue in it. And when you're a fetus in your mom's uterus, Mine didn't seal shut all the way, so then when I was sick the past month, it left a little space for some fluid to collect, and that's why there was a large like cyst on my neck filled with fluid. And I was like, okay, cool, Like, what does that mean for me? And he was just kind of like, well, you can get it out if you want. You don't need to have it out because it's not dangerous. It's sort of ugly, but it's not a big deal. And I was like, okay, I don't, I'm not dying to have a surgery, so I'm just going to put that off. So after that, I had like this false alarm that, you know, I kind of thought I had cancer for like five minutes and then comes back and was like, nope, it's just filled with fluid. It's totally normal. Tons of people had it. I looked it up. It made a bunch of sense. There was all these diagrams like explaining exactly how it happens. And I was like, I felt good about it. And I had all these, all these paperwork of scans to back it up. So fast forward, I left that alone for like two years. So from age 19 to 21, I was like, people would ask me and I was like, yeah, that's just a cyst. Like it's a birth defect. I've had tons of testing done on it. Everything short of a biopsy because I have extreme severe phobia of needles. Like I need to be sedated. Um, It's been like that my whole life. So they never offered a biopsy because they did all these other scans that proved it was harmless and whatever. So. I just kept going on with things and people would ask like, oh, what's what's up with your neck? And I was like, I know it's super weird, right? Um, I'll have it out eventually, but it's not really a priority right now. I was in school. I was trying to graduate on time. I didn't want this to be a thing. I didn't want a scar on my neck. So I was like, if I can maybe just like wait it out, it might like reabsorb into my body. That's also a possibility, but it didn't. And I saw another doctor totally unrelated. He took one look at my neck and said, what's that? And I told him, you know, I had the test done. It's just a cyst, like no big deal. Ha ha. And he looks at me dead serious and was like, cysts are really soft and they're like, you can move them around because they're fluid. This one was hard as a rock. And he was like, that's not, that's not it. You need to have a second opinion. You need to go to a specialist. And I was kind of like, okay, like I've done all the tests. I don't know what else they're going to tell me, but waste my time. So, okay, but I'll do it. Like if you, you look pretty serious. So I did it. Um, And even I met with a surgeon and he was like, yep, looking at my scan results that I had faxed over from the other hospital and said, that's a cyst. Like, we'll take it out for you. But again, it's at your convenience. And when you have time off school and it's not urgent, but if you want it out, we'll take it out. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, it might as well come out because it's going to have to at some point. And I'm young and I have time off school. I don't have any, you know, kids or priorities. I don't have a job. I just can take the luxury of relaxing and healing and everything. So I planned it over winter break. We planned the surgery for December 23rd, like the eve of Christmas Eve, which is like a great way to celebrate Christmas. I remember my biggest concern was that I was gonna have a scar on my neck. And at this time I was 21. I hadn't graduated yet. I wanted to move back to California and start modeling. And I was worried that that would would ruin everything. I thought if I had a scar, that's it. Like. I will never model like I've always wanted to and it's just not happening for me but I guess my health is most important so I'll do it um so that's actually why I have two scars this one is a lot less noticeable and people often think it's a hickey which is cute it's not uh so I have two scars that was from the first surgery and they went in to take it out and I remember being so nervous about having a scar and I was thinking that like people would look at me different or like people would ask a bunch of questions and it was kind of a lame story to just be like, I had a birth effect that popped up when I was 21. Um, so I was pretty nervous, but they told me it was an easy surgery. The, the cyst itself was very close to the skin, so they didn't have to go in very deep at all, which I was like, it's kind of graphic, but good to know. Um, 
and yeah, the surgery was easy. I woke up, I was having a blast on anesthesia. I have some videos. I'll see if I can find them. Um, mm, it was so good. <laughs> okay, I'll leave him here with you. I'll come and get you him back when I come back. I'll come back in like five. I was living, living my best life. It was a success. I was feeling good. I was so relieved to be done with it. I thought, thank God, I never have to see that surgeon again. I never have to, I've never had a surgery besides my wisdom teeth, which is sort of like surgery light. I am, don't want to be in a surgeon's office ever again. So we go back after a surgery, you have the, um, like the 24 hour checkup to kind of assess like how things went or how things are healing. And he had told me, you know, we didn't find what we wanted to find we found something completely different. All the cells in that area were totally diseased. They were full, they were like purplish, I guess, filled with cancer. They told me like, they thought they were gonna see healthy tissue, healthy cells, and that's just not what they found. And no one could have predicted it because the scans all pointed to birth defect. And then when they did the surgery, it said something completely different. And so he said, I don't wanna scare you, but we've sent the tissue that we removed to pathology and a pathologist's job is to decide what the heck am I looking at like is this dangerous or not and so he said we'll call you in a few days but like it might not be what you're thinking and at that point I'm like wait 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 no 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 you have the wrong person that is not what you were supposed to say that was not what you're supposed to say at all I was supposed to say like one and done see you never like thanks for that bye um, and I just remember thinking like, this is not how it was supposed to happen in my head. I had planned this out to be back at school, having a good time at New Year's Eve. I had a New Year's Eve party to go to with my friends that I hadn't seen. And this was just not, not in my plans. And uh, I was speechless. Like, you mean to tell me that this went bad? Like this went wrong? And he was like, yeah. And so I was like, okay, this is a nightmare, but, um, moving on. I don't, I don't have any control over this. Um, so he called me back. I, I tried to just do, and after that, I just tried to do normal things because what am I supposed to do? Sit around all, like I would lose my mind. I was already losing my mind, but I was like, let me just try to like be normal, do things I would normally do. Like, even if I'm not feeling hundred percent or feeling really anxious, I should probably just still like go Christmas shopping or like see my friends and like, and I, I kind of told them, but I also didn't really want to talk about it because it would make me more anxious just to talk about it and keep worrying. Um, which was so great. My friends were so great through it all and just trying to like keep me in good spirits and distract me and like sending me flowers. I, I, I don't know. I never wanted to be that person that needed to be sent flowers, if that makes sense. Like I didn't want to be the pity party. Um, but like looking back, that was so nice and so supportive. And I know that all my friends felt super helpless. And like even to say that like the surgery went well was really, really tough and really hard. I, I remember I had to text my friends because I couldn't say it out loud. And they had all the same reaction, like, that is not what I expected you to say. Um, so anyway, I was living my life as normal as I could. I went Christmas shopping with a friend, and we were in the mall, and I got a phone call, and I answered it, and he said, hi, it's the doctor. Um, we just got results back, and that is cancerous. And I had the same reaction all over again, which was, you were not supposed to say that. I didn't want to hear those words out of your mouth. Um, and I think my first like instinctual phrase that came out of my mouth was, do I get to keep my hair? Which is so vain, but also so relevant. I needed to know. And he was like, yes, absolutely. Yes, you do not need to do chemotherapy. And I was just like, OK, but what do I need to do? <laughs> like what? that being said, what do I need to do? And he was like, you need to have a surgery. Um, we're going to try to get you in as soon as possible, which means like within the next week, which turned out to be New Year's Eve. So I had. Christmas Eve Eve and New Year's Eve, I was in surgery. And then after we do the surgery, which should go well, we will do radiation, which means you'll be radioactive for a little bit. Um, you'll have to be like doing all these treatments and then you can start your thyroid replacement medication. So your thyroid makes hormones for your entire body, like the basic metabolism that controls the way when you eat something, is that food going to be, and the calories that come with it, is that gonna be spent on keeping you warm? Is that gonna be spent on making body fat? Is that gonna be spent on making you tired or awake? Like how does your body spend the calories you're giving it, basically? And so now that I would not have a thyroid, I would need to start a medication. And I was like, I think I remember being in the mall and just saying, 
I want to go home now. <laughs> I need you to take me home. And my friend was like, still trying so hard to keep everything light and like trying to cheer me up. And he was like, do you want to go to in and out Do you want to get French fries? And I was like, I, no, I don't. Um, and I think the last thing I said to my doctor was like, can you call my dad or my mom, either one, and explain everything you just said? Because I am so emotional that I can't repeat that. And I don't know how to tell my own parents that I have cancer. And I don't have the answers to their questions, and I know that you do. So if you could just do me a solid and call my parents. And he was kind of not super thrilled that I asked him to do that, but I also didn't give him an option because I, I couldn't tell my parents that I had cancer. I mean, I, what am I going to say? And so he was like, okay, I mean, I can try to do that, but if they don't answer, like, there's nothing I can do. And I was like, my dad's going to answer. If I know my dad, he lives with his phone. He will answer. The first surgery was fine. It wasn't that painful. Um, they even told me that since it was so close to the surface of the skin, that they didn't have to go like too deep or anything, which was great. Um, I think I took maybe one of the pain pills, and after that, I just I felt fine. Um, didn't really hurt that bad. Even having the stitches removed, I didn't feel anything. And I guess it's because they've like cut the nerves of the surface of your skin, so your skin doesn't have all the sensation left. Um, I I wasn't as bad as I thought at all. Um, the second surgery was terrible, absolutely terrible. And I later found out it's because your thyroid is a little like butterfly shaped thing, sort of like this, and it wraps around your esophagus, which is like where your food goes. And so they have to open you up so deep and like scrape around your esophagus. Uh, and no pressure, but the, um, the nerves for your vocal, your vocal box, your voice box, uh, the nerves for your voice lie right on top of it, so they have to carefully move that aside, hopefully they don't damage it, take out the thyroid, put that back, and then seal you back up again. So that shit hurt really bad. And I remember waking up from surgery, and I had gone into it thinking, this is kind of fun, like, drugs are kind of fun. And I woke up thinking, give me more, I can feel everything. My mom told me I was so pale and so white, almost blue, and I was just crying. I just woke up and started crying. And I was like, what? What's going on? What's happening? This is awful. This is the worst pain I've ever felt. And um, went home and slept for a really long time. But it was not funny like the first time. And I don't have any funny videos of post-surgery me from that one because I was in a lot of pain. Um, and I remember even following like the next day and the next few days, I had my mom call the doctor and say like, you need to give her stronger pain medications. This is unbearable. Like this is the most pain I've ever been in. And what you're giving her is like way too weak and you need to give her something stronger. And they said, she's on the strongest that we have. So that's that. And I was just like, great, <laughs> uh, this is great. Um, and it is in a really inconvenient location to do anything really to turn your neck to use a straw was Using a straw was absolutely out of the question. I couldn't use the muscles in my neck to like make a suction of any type. Um, yeah, it was bad. There's no sugar coating it. It was not fun. Um, and the side effects from pain medications are also not fun. Um, so after that, I had no thyroid, which means I wasn't making any thyroid hormone, which means I was super tired because my body didn't know how to my body didn't know how to manage its energy level. And so I was really tired. I would sleep up to 18 hours a day. Um, I couldn't go up the stairs in one go because I was just physically exhausted. I'd have to like sit down for a minute and then go again. Um, that's, that's about all I remember. I was so out of it. I was so foggy. I remember going home because this was my second semester senior year of college. And I remember thinking like, oh, this won't be so bad, like, just trying to stay positive. Like, again, I thought the surgery was going to be, like, not that bad and, like, not that big of a deal. So I was like, I can just bring home some homework and kind of work from home, and, like, that way when I go back into school in exactly two weeks, I won't be behind, and then I can continue, like, exams and stuff, and, like, it just won't really cause that much disruption. I was wrong. <laughs> I was so wrong about that. I had not only no physical energy, but I had no mental energy either. So reading a book, uh-uh, oh no, no, that was way too much mental energy. Um, I, I maxed out at America's Next Top Model, which I watched 16 seasons of, back to back. So 
if I was awake, I'd be watching that. If not, I would just be napping. I would have a morning nap, afternoon nap, pre-bed nap, nighttime nap, constantly just sleeping. So it was, it was relaxing, I guess. I guess if you want to stay positive, it was, it was very relaxing. Overall, I felt like radiation was so anticlimactic and so underwhelming that I was like, you mean to tell me I don't have superpowers? Like, I'm not glowing, like, nothing's green, I'm not blowing anything up with my mind, like, I was, I was disappointed, honestly. Radi being radioactive is a lot cooler in theory and in comic books, but in reality it's just, I didn't really feel any different. I guess the way it works is that the surgery takes out the biggest portion of the thyroid and then the radiation kind of goes from the inside out and on a like a microscopic cellular level destroys every thyroid cell possible. What they do is they give you a pill, it just looks like a vitamin, but it's in this container that's like the size of a peanut butter jar, like it's this huge container and the doctor was like showing me what it was and he's like try to pick it up and so i go to you know like be cute and pick it up and my wrist just goes totally like this Careful. and i was like what is that like why would you have me do that i cannot lift it off this desk and he was like yeah that's a container full of lead like it's made of pure lead and i was like what and he was like yeah the the radioactive pill inside of it and the little capsule was tiny like it was just this huge contained brick of lead basically with a little hole for the pill inside he's like if we don't store it in here everything that the pill touches will also be contaminated and also be radioactive and i don't know i guess bad things will happen i don't really know what that means for everything else but that's the way that they transport it so one of those pills has to be in a brick of lead um, so yeah, starting the treatment was super anticlimactic. Um, I just took this vitamin and he said, okay, stay in your room for three days straight. Don't touch anyone. Don't touch your pets. Clean the toilet with this uh, anti-radioactive medication. Um, any, any dishes that you touch, any cups that you drink out of, any fork or knife that you use has to be stored in a garbage bag for 90 days. And then after 90 days of the garbage bag in your backyard, just chilling, you can throw it out like if you used I had to use paper or plastic utensils and so after I touched anything it would be in the bag and after three months we could throw it out so we were hoarding garbage in the backyard for a little bit um, yeah treatment was not fun I mean I was really tired anyway so it wasn't that different for me sleeping 18 hours a day just it meant that the six hours I was awake I wasn't allowed to hang out with my family or go downstairs or really anything like that. I had my own bathroom at home so I could just use the bathroom to myself and not have to share it with anyone. Um, it wasn't it wasn't that disruptive. I guess if you have children or you have like a lot of pets that you have to take care of personally it would be super disruptive and you would have to spend those three days in the hospital because there's just no other choice but I don't have kids and my pets were taken care of by my mom and dad so um, they just kind of left food at my door and I had like um, a water dispenser and I had to drink so much water to try to flush out this medication in three days um, and then the other weird thing is that the, the iodine was processed through my salivary glands so what makes your saliva and it, I just remember having this radiating pain all through my cheeks, like the nerves would just be so painful. And so the doctor even said, because it's processed through your salivary glands, you need to have like sour candies on the third day. He gave me these weird sour candies and he was like, eat these on day three. And I was like, okay. And so I ate them and I remember like this excruciating pain because my mouth was watering so bad. And then for the next year, if I were to smell food or start to get hungry and like food was served to me um, or like you're getting ready to eat or anything, I just remember my face would just be in so much pain and I was like, I can't do this. I can't eat. I physically can't eat anything. It's, it's too painful. Um, and that was a problem for a while. And it wasn't like I could anticipate it and take Advil because it would happen every time I ate. So it's like, do I wait? 
30 minutes before I eat, take Advil on an empty stomach and then hope for the best. It just wasn't working and I was getting so frustrated because I remember traveling that year and I was so hungry and I wanted to eat food and uh, I just couldn't and it was the worst. So that was like the worst because it lingered for so long and finally I'm past that. But for at least a year, I had a lot of trouble trying to eat physically. Not I was starving, but I just couldn't physically eat anything. And I had, it looked like a business card, but it had said like my name and I had undergone radioactive treatment. And if I set off any alarms at the airport, that's what it was. And that I wasn't trying to commit terrorism of any type. Like I was, my body was radioactive. It wasn't anything that I was like carrying onto the plane. So that was kind of cool, but I never even got to show anyone that. So I was like, this is, this is a bust. This is kind of stupid. <laughs> So I remember thinking like, oh, this is going to be kind of cool. Like I'm going to set off the metal detector and I'll be like surprised. Like I am the radioactive one and that never happened. So I have that card in my wallet. I have never had to use it. Um, I'm trying to think of anything cool that happened from being radioactive. Nothing. I was chubby. I was tired. My neck hurt a little bit because I could feel it working and I just had to follow a lot of rules, like not to share plates with anyone, not to touch anyone, not to use another toilet that wasn't specially cleaned for me. Um, yeah, it was really boring. I don't know why I didn't have to do chemo. I didn't ask questions about that. I was not eager to do chemotherapy. I accepted the fact that I guess treatment is so advanced and so well researched that they don't need to do chemotherapy, which I am so thankful for because that is super super rough on your body um and just a really crappy thing to go through and destroys your like it i'm just so glad i didn't have to do that um so i don't i didn't ask why not but i know that it's not common to do chemotherapy unless the cancer has spread um and i guess te technically speaking this this first surgery was a lymph node that had filled with cancer cells so they did say it had metastasized to my lymph nodes and they removed like 10 additional lymph nodes all through this area. So I'm down a few lymph nodes, but that's okay. I'm still good. Um, so then I was put on Synthroid. Oh my God. Uh, if anyone's out there who went through the same thing I did, who had thyroid cancer and started Synthroid for the first time, you know what I'm talking about when I say I felt like I was on crack. I felt like I had drank 16 cups of coffee. I felt like I was having some sort of like manic episode. And anyone who saw me during that first couple of days when I was adjusting to it thought I was on drugs or thought I was drunk or like didn't know why I had so much energy all of a sudden. And I was like, is this how I'm supposed to feel? Like, is this, is this what everyone else is feeling? Meanwhile, I've been dragging my ass to get out of bed every single day and everyone else is like popping up and awake. And I was just, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, I can do so many things. I can get so much done. I can have so many conversations. Like this is, this is incredible. And it took a while. Like, of course I had literally zero thyroid hormone to go from zero to, I don't, I can't remember what they started me on. Maybe like 75 milligrams was insane. Was an insane jump and um, actually triggered me to have some like anxiety because I was running at such a high speed. And I later found out that if you do have underlying anxiety, they, they ease you on it a lot slower, but I went, all the way up and I was feeling right for a few days. Oh my goodness. I was feeling so good. It was, it was bizarre. I remember specifically feeling like my body was just like running at like a higher rate of speed. I just felt kind of like wired. Like, like I said, if you had 16 cups of coffee and you weren't a regular coffee drinker. Oh, oh, that was a lot. That was incredible. That was insane. Um, after that, I, I kind of mellowed out and my doctor's adjusted it here and there a little higher a little lower it does affect my weight which sucks so I'll, I'll fluctuate like 10 or 15 pounds and I have to take it first thing in the morning every single morning for the rest of my life and I can't eat for an hour after I take it so I have to take it like literally the second I open my eyes and then I can lay in bed for a little bit and like just hang out until I have anything to eat or drink one of the main reasons I made this video is because when I was going through this I looked into YouTube and Google and Reddit and like personal accounts of other people who had gone through this because I had no idea what to expect and there was like nothing I mean there were some online accounts and stuff and like 
one girl who kind of was like my age, but she just was like, when I get tired, I go for a run. And I was like, yikes, not, can't relate. Like, like, no. Um, so I hope this helps someone who's going through it currently and to know that like, it does get a lot better and you just have to take it one day at a time. And like, you might not be feeling good today. You might not be feeling good tomorrow. You might be going through additional surgeries, but it is possible to like see it through and get your thyroid hormones all stable and fixed. And I just hope this can provide some hope because I was really hopeless for a long time and I had no one to look to who had the same experience that I did or even similar besides my one friend. And even still, I was like, am I gonna be okay? But day to day basis, people are like, oh wow, you are so strong, you're so brave. And I'm kind of like, I didn't choose to do this. <laughs> I didn't willingly volunteer to have cancer, so I don't quite get why that makes me brave. Um, I, I chose to have a positive attitude. I guess that's all you can do. I make a ton of jokes about it. Um, as much as I can, I try to laugh about it because it's not that funny and I can get really depressed about it. So I just try to keep it light and try to stay positive and thankful. But I mean, survivor's guilt is real because I do know a lot of people who've passed away from cancer who are younger than me who fought longer than me, who went through chemotherapy and they still didn't make it. Um, so that is hard to come to terms with, to feel like I kind of got off easy. And some people I know haven't. So yeah, I guess that's it. Um, I get a lot of questions on it, like I said, and it's not always a good time or place to talk about it. And sometimes I just don't feel like talking about it, which I think is fair, but I haven't quite figured out how to say that. So I find myself in these conversations that I'm like, Oh boy, uh, I don't, I don't really want to be here to talk about this. I don't want to be the spokesperson for thyroid cancer, to be honest. Um, and for me, it is a real repetitive story because it happened three years ago. Like, there's no updates really. Um, yeah, so I thought I would just put this all in one place so when people do ask about it, or when they haven't asked about it and they want to know, which I get, you can just go here and see it all. So, so. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that health is so important and to listen to your body is so important. And if you feel like something's not right, like when I first went to that urgent care and I was like, this this isn't right, this has never happened before, like my body's never done this before. Take that seriously. Like when something's not feeling quite right, don't just blow it off. And like, even if doctors tell you you're fine, you might not be fine. Um, and if you have a, like a weird feeling about something, get a second opinion, get a third opinion. And not that you should seek out like the answer that you want to hear, but take it seriously. Like don't, don't just say like, yeah, sure. Like that's a good answer. Like, like they were saying I can have a surgery whenever I want. Like that sounds great. Um, I probably should have got that looked into and it's probably not something to just blow off. But like I said, I was in school, I was young. I trusted doctors hundred percent and I don't anymore to be honest. Um, if something funky is going on, I definitely like to see it through and just prioritize your health. Like if you have to miss work, if you have to miss school, if you have to miss social events, like so be it. But, um, yeah. So yeah. Thank you for listening to my story. Um, if you have any questions, I will always answer them and that's it. I'm thankful for every single day that I get to wake up and be on this earth and take a breath and everything I get to experience in life. I'm so super grateful for all the good, all the bad. I think it's all worth it in the end. So thank you. Bye.